Hey guys, I'm going to read through chapter one, Family History of Hey Kiddo. Um, so this is what that video is for. If you're thinking this is an instructional video, it's not. Um, we're just going to go through it. My name is Ms. Cope. If you never met me before, um, I have my headphones on because my roommate's watching 90 Day Fiance. So hopefully you guys are not distracted or hearing that in the background. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Clarence Olson request the honor of your presence at a dinner and wedding reception for their daughter, Shirley Ruth, and Joseph D. Krasowska. Pretty sure I'm still saying that wrong. Son of Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Krasowska. <laughs> Saturday afternoon, August 28th, 1948, at 1 o'clock. P&A Hall, 49 Lafayette Street, Worcestershire, Worcester, <laughs> Massachusetts. Chapter 1, Family History. Surely my grandmother was in study hall when Joe, my grandfather, walked in for the first time. As Shirley always told the story, she stopped on a dime at the sight of him. Who is that? That is the man for me. My grandfather was a freshman. My grandmother was a junior. He, too, was smitten, so he lied about his age. No, me? I'm not a freshman. I'm a junior. Then why haven't I seen you around here before? Transfer student. You don't say... Let's say you let me take you out this weekend. Pick me up at six on Saturday. I'm Shirley Olson. Look me up in the book. And I'm Joe Krasowski. There was a full moon on their first date. Will you look at that moon? And that was their first kiss. I imagine that Joe was only able to keep his ruse for so long. Because eventually Shirley would graduate in the spring of 1945. And he wouldn't. But Joe had something bigger on his mind than graduating. He wanted to see the world and serve his country during World War II. He wasn't 17 yet, so he got creative with his birth date on his enrollment papers, which is why he accepted the misspelling of Krasowski, Krasowski, his last name, on his papers. Joe helped build the highways in Guam, and while he was away, he received a breakup letter from Shirley. He was devastated, but he also seemed to enjoy his time in Guam. I don't know how, but when Joe returned, he won back Shirley's heart, and they were married. It was a controversial union. Joe's parents were Catholics who had immigrated to the U.S. from Poland, while Shirley's parents were Protestants who immigrated from Sweden. When they settled into life together, Joe needed money, so he took work wherever he could get it. When he saw a bunch of neckties on sale at a department store downtown, he saw a golden opportunity. Can I help you? Yes, I'm going door to door with this amazing deal on neckties. Surely you'd love to surprise your husband while he's away at work. They're only 15 cents a piece, or two for 20. Joe made a killing that first day, so we went back out day after day. One afternoon, he had some extra money in his po back pocket, so he treated himself to a coffee and a piece of pie at a local diner. Good afternoon, officer. Sir? How goes the beat today? Well, there's the guy going door to door selling ties without a license. We've been getting lots of complaints. You haven't seen anything, have you? Nope. Well, good to, good luck to you. I hope that you find the guy. That was the last day Joe sold ties. Joe and Cheryl. Oh, I guess he changed his name, her name to Cheryl. Says so Shirley. That's kind of cute. Cute little nickname. Joe and Shirl started having children, and Joe was cooking up a plan to make some money to support his new family. First came Joey, and then Leslie, my mother. In that same year, 1955, Joe opened up a factory to produce piping for sinks. While he worked day and night, more kids came into the picture. Stephen arrived. And then, with three kids in tow, Shirley had a miscarriage. It threw her. Shirley eventually got pregnant again and wanted to name the baby Holly. She's always loved that name. But the lady who lived across the street had a cat named Holly. Holly, come here. Holly. Oh, where's that damn cat? So they named the baby Lynn. Shirley found herself pregnant yet again within a few months of Lynn's birth, and during that pregnancy, the neighbor's cat died. She and Joe named their fifth kid Holly. How did my parents meet? How did I come into this world? I don't know many of the details of it, 
I just know that it was my at my father's family's bar. He was on stage playing with his band. I always imagined my mother caught his eye while he strummed his guitar. However, they found each other, they did, and they managed to hide it from my father's girlfriend, and then my mother got pregnant. My father backed off, claiming that the baby wasn't his. Supposedly, his girlfriend started spreading stories about how my mother had been sleeping around, so the baby could belong to anybody. And sure, she had been sleeping around, but my mom knew he was the father as soon as I was born. I was white. All of her other boyfriends hadn't been. When my grandmother found out my mother was pregnant, she called her some tr- terrible names. God damn. Mm, I don't want to read those. But they're in red. My mom feared Shirley's arrival after I was born. Where's the baby? Meet your grandson, Jared. Look at you, Uchi Kuchi Ku. Oh, I'm so in love. How'd everything go? When he was born, he had the umbilical cord around his neck. His skin was purple and he couldn't breathe, but he's fine now. Everything's going to be more than fine, Les. Hey, kiddo. Where'd you come up with a name like Jarrett? I was driving on the highway a few weeks ago and I saw it on the side of a truck. I came in an oversized stocking on Christmas Day. That is the end of chapter two, or excuse me, chapter one. Hopefully I'll see you guys back here for chapter two in the next.